Cena's Corner. What's up, guys? So today we're going to take a look at OS10 Lion 10.7, or simply just call it Lion. All right, we're going to take a look at what I consider to be the key features. Too many features to go over, which would be longer than 15 minutes. I'm just going to give you what the key features are that I feel. If you want to talk more about things like versions and all that kind of stuff, uh, we'll do that in a separate video. Just let me know in the video description. Also, I want to pass along that if you are a new iMac owner and you got your iMac before June 6th to now, that's any kind of Mac, uh, I have a link in the description of this video where you can pick up Lion for absolutely free. Also, if you bought your computer the day Lion came out, and after that, you can go to the same link. You have 30 days to get Lion if it was not already pre-installed on your computer, which I think the MacBook, the new MacBook Airs is the only ones that have Lion in pre-installed at this point. So let's move on. First thing I do want to point out is the brand new thing here called About This Mac. If you go into About This Mac and then you click on More Info now, it looks like a little bit different. What it's going to do is going to give you a complete overview of your computer in one glance. So let's zoom in on this a little bit. So in just one glance, it gives you a computer. It gives you your displays, uh, how big your display is, what, how, the resol how much resolution you have in that, and the video graphics card that you're running that on. And then it gives you some storage information. And it takes a few seconds to pull up because it's actually allocating and looking at all your storage to see how much space you have left. And it gives you a complete breakdown of what you have on there. Now this looks like iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch a little bit because it does give you that same thing you see in iTunes when you jack those in. It gives you a meter with color codes to tell you what's on there and how much of what there is there. Okay, then also in memory, to give you a breakdown of how many sticks of memory you have, how many sticks of memory you can put in. Uh, usually, uh, Macintosh computers that are iMacs are only upgradable to about 8 gigs. So I have two more slots. Somehow, I think that you may be able to get more than that in there. All right, so that's that part right there. Also, let's take a quick look at what the brand new Finder looks like. That is going to be different. You have a new folder now instead of a centralized folder. This is just called All My Files. So it just browses through things that's on your desktop. I have a folder right here called Desktop Stuff, and that's what this is pulling this out of. This is just all stuff that's on my desktop. Uh, right now in folders and things of that nature. Also, they have a new feature called AirDrop. If you do have a Macintosh or you have like mini Macs in your house, or if you just have a friend come over within 30 feet of you, if they are on your Wi-Fi network, you can just drag and drop files here. Wireless, Wi-Fi, effortless. You don't have to set anything up, just drag and drop and they get the files. All right, let's move into some of the more key features. The first one we're going to go ahead and talk about is Launchpad. Now, everything is gesture controlled on here. Uh, I do have a touchpad, which I recommend for that. But also, if you don't want to use the gestures, you have two other options. You have the option of Launchpad is right here, or you can do what I did, which you see me do here in the beginning, which is called a hot corner. But the gesture to pull it in is going to be the thumb and uh, four fingers pinch in, and this is Launchpad now. And as you can see with Launchpad, you just take the two fingers, move left or right, and you can scroll through all of your um, of your current documents or your current um, apps that you have on here at the moment. Also, if you really want to make uh, something that's kind of like like a folder, you can now do that. So let's just do this. I take Live Type and put it over here, and now I have a folder called Productivity. You can also rename that folder anything you want to rename that. Um, by just highlighting it like that. So again, this is like iOS, uh, the iOS. So iPod, iPad, iPhone. However, I'm not quite sure how I feel about having um, folders on the computer where it's great for iOS stuff. But this is also a good glance. Some people think this will take over Spotlight and the dock, but I highly doubt that because if you look down here, I have a lot of stuff that's in my dock, which is the most important things that I use all the time. I may kick these games out now since they're there, but I do have important stuff that's here. And Spotlight for veteran users is just something that you use because of the fact that it's cool. You know, you just simply type in something and anything dealing with that just all pops up there. All right. The other thing they did keep them, they did keep, but they did keep hot corners. That's what you saw here. So I have my hot corner set, one of them, so I don't have to do gesture all the time, for Launchpad, which is the top left corner. I put my mouse in the top left corner. Here's Launchpad. Automatically comes up for me. And then if I don't want to get rid of it, I just click on my trackpad, and it's gone. 
All right, the other thing we're going to talk about is mission control. A uh, mission control gesture is four or three fingers push up and you run right into mission control. Now, mission control is expose and spaces combined. And what that does is it gets rid of the expose and spaces and puts it all in one. So right up here, what you're seeing is all of my spaces right here. So right now I have six spaces that is open plus my central board. Now, the one thing I want to point out real quick, because I know some of my friends have been having problems with this, is the full page, uh, the full, uh, full screen pages takes up its own space. Let me show you how that works. So I want to go ahead and create a new space. I just highlight over in the corner, uh, copy my desktop pumps out, and I click the plus, and it gives me another desktop. So I want to get out of here, it's just three fingers down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up iCal. iCal, as you will see, also has a brand new facelift to it. It's a little bit more like a desktop calendar. Now, um, See, uh, even reminded myself that I have somebody has my movie anger management out. All right, so anyways, so right here, what you do is you go into mission control, three fingers up, okay? And then what you do is you take this and you move it into desktop four. Now, as you can see, it is in the desktop four space. Uh, and I can just click on that to go right into that. However, if I full screen this now, you're gonna see that the full screen app is going to take over its own spot in the desktop spaces and it kicks out desktop four all you want to do is just go ahead and exit out of desktop four and then that's it's going to take over the space that the desktop four is in it's not going to send it all the way to the left or to the right it's going to keep it where it is some of my friends are saying that when they go full screen is taking their application and throwing it everywhere well this is the way for that not to happen all right all right, so anyways, let's take a look at the rest of how this works. So I can simply click on what I want to bring up, or I could just scroll through. So you don't have to bring up um, Mission Control all the time. You can just scroll through all of your pages that you currently have open at the time, and it's going to show you each of the spaces. Now, with Expose and Spaces before, uh, Mission Control is the same way. You, you had a cap of six or 15 pages the way this works is it's just going to give you pages as you need them i haven't tested how much you can max out but i'm sure it's going to be at least 15. all right so the easiest way for us is just to swipe through them i like that it's a three finger swipe to the left or the right and now we have here now here's another cool thing if you're on a page and you want to browse through your history of that page you just take two fingers if you're doing gestures and you just swipe to the left or the right and then, as you can see, it's going to bring up the current pages before that. It'll go through my whole entire browsing history for as far as it goes. Okay, so I could just swipe through, and if it has to reload the page, it'll reload the page. But this is the easiest way to go through your browsing history without having to keep hitting the back button up here. Okay, also people think that that's going to take away from creating several tabs like I have here. Somehow I doubt that. Uh, but it may end up being easier just to ha now have maybe one or three tabs versus all the tabs that you see that I currently have up here. All right, let's go talk a little bit about mail real quick. This is the new mail. I'm not going to go through all the features. I want to go through this one right here on the, on the far right, which is called conversation view. This is the new conversation view, which works really well. So instead of you getting all the cluttery junk, like if I were to answer back to this to anybody here, uh, this is one of my YouTube videos, electronic versus acoustic drums, 108 of these. Uh, comments I have right now and they're all in conversation view but if there was more stuff like I answered back and there was a, like a long dialogue I could just click in the body of the message and it would drop all of the stuff out like old email but this way you're experiencing the email the way you need it to be experienced and it also has um, it's it's full page so basically if you get like a, a, a big uh, picture is going to show you the full picture it won't cut off so the new mail is cool you can do folders you can do favorites you can allocate where your different accounts go over here it keeps track of all of the mail that you have people think that i'm always playing when i say i have a lot of mail but let me point this out right here just my gmail account alone has forty eight thousand five eighty one. um disregard this because this is an old Cena's corner account but 153 mails just in Cena's corner because I cleaned it out. So now you see my mail clutter. I also have a thing over here for my Twitter account. All right, so I keep all of the things that I want to get my hands on right away 
up here and you can always just swipe back to your to your main board and uh, get into things of that nature so swipe back to your main board mission control you can pull anything you need to pull on your desktop and then just swipe three fingers swipe back and you're there very quick very efficient all right so um the last thing i want to cover is here is your dashboard now now your dashboard also have hot corner to my bottom left corner this is where all your widgets is okay so you can get more widgets but i just have the standard ones now dashboard is something a lot of people usually don't use but i want to go ahead and point this out in mission control uh, system preferences when you get this i recommend that you go ahead and go in there and go into the mission control preference and you take off show dashboard as a space now if you have show dashboard as a space on here what's going to happen is in mission control dashboard now has its own space right over here i don't think it really needs its own space so I personally have that taken off myself and I just have it put down on a hot pocket or I'm sorry, on a hot corner. Um, so, and this is your hot corners right here. Same as usual, you can just select whatever program you want to go in one of the four corners. And then when you touch that part of the screen, just like I showed you with mission control and with dashboard, it automatically would just pop up that particular program. So hot corners are still there. All right, and final, the most noticeable things that is missing from Lion is going to be um, Rosetta, which allows you to take PowerPC programs and go ahead and put that, uh, use that in the Intel um, side of things. Well, the only things of PowerPC, a lot of people are upset about that, but it's gone. I also, I forget the name of it, can't think of the top of my head, but there's like a family entertainment suite where with your remote control uh you would just hit a button and it would go into like this fancy thing like you had like your own like little entertainment center on the mac well they did away with that too as well so those two things only thing that i saw that's going i promise to show you where i got my wallpaper from so let's go back into that real quick and i'll show you i go to a place called imac wallpapers i have been coming here for a long period of time but i just decided to sign up today um so i can upload stuff i wanted to but just go and do a search for Yoda. Here is the wallpaper that I currently have right here, as well as other Yoda wallpapers. And to kind of show you a little bit of how this is allocated, uh, I'm sure any even if you don't have an iMac, you could probably use these, but here's all of your resolutions and stuff that it has for you right here. Now, if you notice, if you do have a Mac, it, do, it is slated for all of the stuff that your Mac can hold and my Mac resolutions wise. So in my case, 2560 by 1440 uh, is what I would go ahead and I want to download that. So it takes advantage of my full screen and then they give you all the other resolutions that's there. Okay. So if you want to get that, go ahead over to iMac wallpapers. I put a link in the description uh, and uh, that's where I get my wallpapers from. So that's it guys. That's OS 10.7, better known as Lion. If you guys want to go ahead and pick that up, like I said, it's right here in the App Store. Unless you got your Mac between June 6th and now or after the fact that Lion came out, it's going to cost you 30 bucks. I think that's very generous for what's all up in here. Uh, and you know how to reach me, Cena, Cena's Corner uh, My Facebook is Facebook forward slash Cena's Corner 1101. Twitter, Cena5401. And if you are on Google Plus, you can look me up under David McClam. All right, guys, let me know what you think about Lion so far. And until next time, peace, love, keep rocking out. And we're going to catch you guys the next time.